It's universally known that as a musician, we need to practice, and the more, the merrier. However, as with anything in life, when we are sucked into something, it's very easy to forget some basic principles, because we are so focused on little details, on a number of things that I'm about to address here in this vlog. And so, as a reminder to you and me, here are five basic principles to keep in mind when we practice music. back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Nathalie, I'm a musician and I'd like to apologize for missing last week's video. It was not my intention, but moving to a new place just takes up way more time than you think. And to be honest, my arms and legs and just my whole body was totally wrecked. So I just did not have find the time to make this vlog, but here we are, we're ready, we're in a new room, we are about to dress the room a little bit more. Also, if you have some ideas for nice symbol art, leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to see your suggestions. And without further ado, let's just dive right into these five basic principles. Grab a notepad, stick it up to your wall, and most importantly, have fun during your practice. Hope these help. Let's see. Number one, listen. I know it sounds almost stupidly simple, but music is all about what we hear. And as a performer, as we are practicing, especially in the beginning of learning a piece, we sometimes forget that part <laughs> because there's already so much coming towards us. Um, whether you're a pianist or a string player or a brass player or a woodwind player, a singer, it doesn't really matter. Um, there's just a lot of information to process at the same time. And so our brains go, what does your body need to do? What are the jumps that we need to make? What, what is going on? So much so that listening oftentimes is at the bottom of the priority list. And that's a shame because oftentimes we can overcome some difficulties, technical difficulties, or basically any difficulty that you're facing by thinking about what is the color that I want to make, how do I want to shape this melody, what do I want to do with the dynamics, um, is there a line somewhere like in the bass or in the middle voice that I can highlight that makes it easier to get through this passage. So if you have the brain space, because <laughs> that is basically what it's all about, we need to have enough space in our mind to think about these things. If you find that, see if it helps, especially in the beginning of the learning process of a piece. And uh, I think it might actually help you save a lot of time. The definition of technique is not that it is separate from music. And that is often the way we think about technique, especially in the beginning when we're learning an instrument. I don't know about you, but me as a kid, when someone talked about technique, I thought, oh, it's just the exercises that I need to do before I make music. And in a sense, okay, in the beginning, that's true, because as a professor, when you have a young kid, you don't want to confuse the kid with everything that, you know, the vast world that music is, because that's what it is. It's a world on its own, and a lifetime is not enough to uncover all its mysteries. But um, technique, basically what that is, is the tool that you use in order to make the music. You cannot make music without technique. And there is also no reason to just practice technique without thinking about music and musicality, because they are inherently connected. Technique is nothing more and nothing less than all the movements in exact sequence that you need in order to perform a passage or like a, like a scale or anything that is involved in the music that you're playing. And in order to make that easily accessible, like whenever you get a new piece and you know, so you recognize certain things, that's why we do all these technical exercises on the side. It's to make it more easily accessible, more easy for your body to remember things, make it really part of your muscle memory, um, totally optimize 
the sequence of movements so that it you know, helps you get through a piece faster when you're learning it. But in principle, technique and musicality, they're connected. <laughs> so please do not think of technique as something separate from music. It's not. And when you're doing technical exercises, don't just zone out and do it on automatic pilot, which is what I did for a number of years before the click kind of came and I was like, well, this doesn't make any sense. I'm basically losing time because I'm not thinking about what I want this to sound like should it be in a piece of music, you know? So remind yourself of that, okay? Don't see technique as something separate because it's not. Much like with storytelling, if we don't know where the story is going, it's a lot harder to make the story convincing. So before you even start practicing your piece, it's a good idea to just scroll through the pages and get a general sense of what this piece is about. Are there sections that are returning? Is there a modulation going? What is the key that we're in? What do we know about this key? Um, are there motives that are returning? What sections are repeated and then what's the different ending to those sections to go through the next passage? Um, anything that you notice, just take mental note or an actual note of that in your score and then start your practice. Um, again, I'm speaking from my own experience, but as a kid, and maybe that's also just really part of my character, but I have a real talent of zooming in <laughs> on things. Maybe so much so that I forget the actual full landscape. And, you know, being able to zoom in and really perfect certain passages is absolutely something that you need. But if it makes you forget the overall story, you know, you're going to lose a lot of the story that you're telling. So make an overview before you even play a note. And I think that can really help reduce the amount of time that you need to spend with a piece in order to feel comfortable. Always choose quality over quantity. There is no reason whatsoever to practice eight or 10 hours a day if your limit is between four and six, which for me it is. If I really want to get the best out of my practice, then I know that daily I need to get between four and six hours. No more, no less. And of course it depends on the amount of music that you need to practice, on the gigs that you get, on the recordings that you need to make. Um, sometimes, you know, there are times where it's extremely busy and there's just no other way around it than to practice 12 hours. Okay, well then so be it. And if we need to do that for a week or two weeks, fine. But if I want to sustain my practice and really, you know, keep inspired and keep finding lovely things within the music that I'm practicing and not getting uh, exhausted, both for my brain and for my body, then I know, for the six hours, that's perfect for me personally. So, find your own boundaries, see what works for you, see if you can maybe push your boundary a little bit further, but do not overly, you know, go, go crazy on the practice hours if it in the end does not give you anything in return, okay? Always quality over quantity. And then lastly, just make a really distinct difference between practice and performance. I know that performing is like the most fun part about playing music. Um, it's also the most tempting thing to do, especially in the beginning of the practice. And don't get me wrong, it can be really useful to, you know, not play, just directly perform your piece and then start your practice. But that's what I mean. After the performance, that's when your practice starts. If you start your practice session with performing. Um, so I just really want to remind you that going from the beginning to the end and then returning to the beginning and just doing the same thing over and over and over and over again without really zooming in and without really checking what exactly is happening, why is there tension in your body, what is making you scared, what is making this mistake happen, you know, really starting out what is going on, brushing up 
getting your hands dirty, basically, um, it's not going to do much. It's going to take you a really long time to get through a piece if you're only performing it and calling that practice. Okay, so really make a distinct difference between the two. And then obviously you can practice performing because performing on its own is, you know, it's a totally different process that is going through your brain and your body because all of a sudden you're on the stage <laughs> and you are a storyteller and you're telling people. So practicing performing is really, really valuable, but then you need to make it a part of your practice and invite someone over and play it for them, listen to their feedback, and then incorporate that feedback in your practice. Or you can record yourself, take a step back from being in the physical activity of playing, and then oftentimes you'll notice a lot of things that you weren't really aware of when you were playing the piece. Okay, so obviously you can do that and that will be very helpful. But just don't always perform a piece for two hours in a row and then call that practice. Because that's not what practice is. Practice is really getting your hands dirty, it's getting into details, um, practicing a bar, two beats of a bar, until they feel so secure and so familiar that you know there is no no tension, there is nothing that is stopping you from making the most beautiful sound that you can in that bar or in those two beats. Okay, so those are my five ground principles of music making. I hope these will help you, and if they did or if they do, then please let me know in the comments below. It's always so great to hear from you. Um, I will see you again next week with a new music video. And in the meantime, I thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll be here again next week. And have a lovely, lovely, lovely weekend. And I'll see you again very soon. Take good care. Bye-bye.